everyone, and welcome to the 49th episode of Nina in Reading. My name is Nina, and I live in Juraspila in central Finland with my husband, our two kids, and a dog. Today is Thursday, uh, the 12th of September, and I'm indoors, and I do apologize that uh, the quality of the video is a little rainy, but it is rainy outside so uh, I had to uh, just stay indoors for this. Uh, I probably will have put just a few photos at the beginning of this episode. Uh, the mornings have been gorgeous. Very, <laughs> I have very many photos that I've taken by the lake uh, close to where I live uh, in the morning when I have been walking the dog, so I will we'll have just put some in the beginning and I will be putting some photos at the very end of this uh, episode because there will not be, well, there won't be any video clips outdoors and I, I think it's nice to start and end the video with some outdoor stuff. Yes, um, it's rainy today. It was pretty nice yesterday. With the weather's been, uh, you know, kind of nice. Uh, some rain showers, but for the most part, okay. Because it is fall here in Finland, so it's it's okay. But today, when I was trying going to go out for for this video, of course. It's raining, so I won't be good doing that. Uh, it's morning, uh, like nine, ten o'clock now. I'll be going to uh, to work a little later today. Uh, you can find me on Ravelry, something that I always forget to say, as Ninima on Instagram. I'm uh, at Nina and Knitting, and we have a Ravelry group called Nina and Knitting Podcast. And you'll find a link to that group or the episode thread right below this video here on YouTube. Yeah, I have uh, all the show notes in the episode thread. So all the uh, projects that I talk about will be linked in there. And uh, I'll be talking about uh, some admin stuff at the very end of this episode. Um, I have two finished, actually I have three. One is knitting, and you can probably see it now. Uh, one is crochet and one is sewing. Um, and then I have some whips and I have a total failure to show you. <laughs> has to do with sewing. Um, so yeah, let's just start with it. So. First of all, my finished object is what I am wearing today. This is the Tolosa sweater, and of course, like this, it doesn't look like much. Uh, this is a pattern by Audrey Morego, and uh, it's just plain stockinette, right? And a little bit of rib. No, it's not, because the thing about it is here on your sides. Um, I'm not sure about the lighting, if you can see it. I'll put some photos, because I took some photos outside and they were pretty nice just a while ago when I had finished this. But yeah, you have this panel of this really nice cable stuff on both sides of the shirt. And, oh, let's see if I can show you this. The same one, same is here in the hem. Well, you can't see it really too well, <laughs> but I have photos, so I'll I'll show it in there. Uh, I used a totally different yarn than suggested, as this is for fingering weight yarn, and I used Holst Holstgarn Coast, which is uh, seven hundred meters by a hundred grams, so it's lighter than a fingering. Is it like fingering or lace? Something. 
But yes, uh, my show notes here, I'll have to check. So host garn is 55% merino wool, 45% cotton. And I used 115 grams of the yarn in here. The gauge was different from uh, the pattern and that's why I uh, used size four instructions and size four is uh, 117 centimeters bust size mine isn't that large i have about what is it 105 or something bust <laughs> but uh, i figured with my gauge watch that that will give me a nice fit for the shirt uh, so 115 grams of the yarn and uh, this is a very nice and very light uh, yarn. I've been wearing this uh, and I just took it from the, the wash. Or, well, I have washed it and I had had it hung um, or actually I had mostly dried it flat but then just for the little while for the last last uh, hours I hung it on the washing line because it was in the way I was doing something in the in the bathroom where I uh, dry my clothes or our clothes so yeah I took it from the wash line washing line now to wear it and show you <laughs> so it is uh, it's clean now uh, but I wore it before and I really liked it we had some really nice sunny days and it was pretty warm and this was really nice to wear. Um, I used the instructions, oh, well, the instructions tell you how many repeats of the sort of uh, cable stuff to do if you want to have it cropped version. And I didn't want it cropped. So I did the, a third repeat of the, um, of the uh, pattern of the cable. And then started with the waistband of the cable. It actually is pretty cropped, even so, because of the difference in the yarn weight and the gauge. But I think it's it's nice. It, it looks nice, and I I'm sure you'll you'll uh, see that in the photos where you see how uh, low it is. So it's not it's not to my bum. It's not to my belly button is just a little under it so to my waist so it's nice uh, as for the cost because I do like to try and <coughs> calculate how much money I have used for my project now so I used 115 grams of the yarn and one yarn ball 50 grams cost me 4.95 so that makes about 11 euros 39 for the yarn and I paid 6 euros 34 for the pattern because it was on discount and we pay VAT here in Finland so in total this shirt was 17.73 so a little under 18 euros pretty nice and I really like it so two thumbs up um, Yes, I might even do this again, but for next summer, because, you know, there will not be <laughs> weather to use this in, in, in Finland anymore. I really don't think so. But I'm really happy I made it, and, and I think it's really pretty. The color I used here is called geranium, and... I really loved it. I had other options that I was pondering over, but and then I decided to go with this nice red and or sort of orange red. And I really liked it. It looks in this light, it looks more orange than it actually is. <clears throat> I think the one the photos we took outside will show you the the color better. I'm sorry for the croaky voice. I may be going, uh, coming down with the flu. I really hope not because I have stuff to do and I need my voice. 
<clears throat> but yes, the second thing I finished is a crochet elephant, and I don't have it here anymore because I just uh, gave it to my husband, who will give it to uh, his uh, sisters. Mm. Partner, let's say partner because they're not married. <laughs> um, their kid has the, his birthday this weekend. I took a little bit of video of the elephant and I'll uh, show it to you here. And it's out of a package I bought from. Uh, a little elf that we have here, so little as in the store, the, the German store. And I bought this, uh, I think earlier this year. As you can see, I paid a full euro for it. It's upside down anyway, one euro. And this box con um, contained the yarn and actually I have this much left and then uh, some black looks like shoelaces but you know you unravel it and used it for for the eyes and it had the stuffing in here but I used it all up and I made the elephant here of course in gray because <laughs> yeah yarn is gray and yeah I think it looks okay uh, the instructions in the package, so there is a crochet hook, hook here, but I didn't use it. It was different from what I'm used to. Uh, it had this um, wooden crochet hook, and it's size 6 millimeters. Uh, well, first of all, I don't like uh, the shape of this hook especially when you're uh, gonna crochet something that's gonna be dense like the stuffed animal um, I like my crochet hooks pointier so I used a hook like this I don't think this is the right size but you can see the difference in here I don't know but it's pointier. I find it easier to push through the fabric when I crochet. And of course, this part of the hook is different also. But yeah, it did contain a hook, I just didn't use it. And uh, six millimeters for me was uh, too thick. So I didn't even use six millimeter needle, uh, needle. <laughs> From this set either I used a smaller one um, I'm not sure how how big it was um, <clears throh> I may have put it in the Ravelry project but I'm not entirely sure um, yeah but the instructions in the package was just um, sort of a booklet no pictures whatsoever and for the most part that was all right um, it's not that complicated and if you just you know follow the written instructions you'll you'll get the result but just in the, like the final stages where you put put the um, the ears where they belong okay yeah you can just see how they look and attach them there and of course after you've done really well and you want to make sure that the kid can't <laughs> unravel ever, anything you'll discover that okay the ears are just different <laughs> but that doesn't matter it gives the, the animal some expression <laughs> and um, but then the tail, um, it said in the instructions that, you know, 
flip the animal over as in the photo or as in the picture. And of course, there were no pictures apart from the ones that are in here. And well, you can't see the elephant's tail in, in the picture. So, okay, that's fine. Well, well, you can see a little bit of the tail in here. But yeah, so I winged it and um, it's fine. It looks fine. <laughs> but yeah, they, they don't like hold your hand. When you're with the instruction. Yeah, and to talk to you about my third finished object, I'll have to talk about uh, the total failure <laughs> first. So, uh, and the third fin finished object, as I said, is sewing. Uh, I have borrowed this book from the library. And, you know, there are different kinds of um, in it in here and I wanted to make uh, a pair of pants and well I don't think the photos are too good in here but yeah these are this is the hand pattern so just straight basic uh, pants I needed new pants for, for work so I Took my measurements, chose the pattern, or uh, chose the uh, the size I believed I was. It's uh, not that clear in here because there there's a chart or uh, yeah chart for man size, a men's size. There's another chart for women, and then there is a third one for mixed and. I wasn't sure whether the pants were women's or mixed. Because, well, maybe I just wasn't reading well enough, but I, I just didn't see it in here. Anyway, <clears throat> I chose, I think I was doing size XL, and I drew the, the pieces on a baking sheet and then I cut them out and I was looking at them oh no they look really wide and yeah you can try and sort of fit the pieces on yourself but especially when you're doing pants and you're doing it by yourself you know you don't want to have help because yeah I could always ask my kids or my my husband but Mm. It's it's not easy. It it should be somebody who knows about sewing and they could sort of fit it on you and say if there needs to be any changes made. Well, anyway, I thought they looked wide. And there were instructions on how to, you know, modify the pieces. So, I did that. And then I started so and I cut out the pieces and then I actually um, unraveled a zipper from a pair of jeans that <laughs> were totally torn out so I couldn't be wearing them anymore so I thought well I'll just take that zipper out of them because the zipper was in okay condition anyway so I attached the zipper and the, the uh, pockets and everything and I assembled it, the pants and I done the side seams and then I tried it on I was like huh it feels kind of snug around my um, like, like pelvis or you know waist and bum and then I did the inseams and I tried it on I was like oh, crap they're too small I can't fit them. <laughs> so I'll show them to you first. This, this was quite a nice yeah, fabric. Luckily, I have the fabric in my stash, so I didn't buy anything. Uh, well, I th and I think I, this is something that I've taken from my mom years and years and years ago. But yeah, <clears throat> I'll just 
close the zipper. So here, here they are. The fabric is um, a little sturdier than the one that I ended up making the next. Well, it's a nice fabric. Uh, I used a different fabric for the inside of the, the front pocket. I'm not sure if you can even tell the difference because they're both pretty black. But this is dark, dark gray, and this pocket is black anyway. And then it has pockets in the back. But yeah, I can't fit them in my feet or in all, oh, I can't fit my ass in there. <laughs> So I and, um, threw it away, or well, not away, but just aside, and <clears throat> checked um, what other fabric I have in my stash. And of course, I did have some, but I didn't have um, sewing thread for it, and I didn't have a zipper for that specific color so I had to go to the store before I could continue with the making of, of the pants but all in all I have a finished pair of pants that I have been wearing and I haven't washed them after that so they're crinkled but anyway they're green as you can see the button was something I had in my stash. Okay. Well, just a normal button. And, and the front pocket and the back pocket. Okay. I'll show you. Uh, I did try and take some video of me wearing these pants just a while ago. Okay. I'll try and insert it here. Um, if I make these pants again, and I might, I might, when I have time, um, I will probably uh, try and make them uh, just a tiny bit uh, higher on the waist. Maybe, you know, the two, three centimeters of the waistband higher. They're fine, but I I prefer my pants, you know, just a little bit higher on the waist. And then um, the legs of the pants are uh, very, very wide. So what I will be doing if I make it again is try and make them a little um, narrower than they are. Because... Like I've said before, I do go to work on my bike, and this is what happens when you have really uh, loose. Ah, can you see? Maybe not in this light. Anyway, there's some uh, bike chain grease. <laughs> On the pan, on the legs, on the right leg, because that's the one that's closer to the chain. But yeah, they're fine, and I'm I'm pretty sure that all you know I can get it off uh, in the wash when I uh, use some detergents or stains. Yeah, so. <laughs> They were my finished objects, and then the one that was totally uh, not <laughs> not successful. And even even if I lost some weight, uh, you know, I couldn't fit myself in those pants. If I saw my sister, my my younger sister, more. Uh, we might try and make them for her, but she's really tiny. Oh, she's about the same height as me, but she's really, her body structure is totally different from mine. So, uh, they probably won't 
Well, I probably wouldn't be able to modify them for her, so maybe they'll be just, you know, the <laughs> trial version, which is a, a quite a shame because I really like the fabric. It's really nice. Okay, um, continuing with something I do with my hands without a machine, um, <clears throat> whips. Florissimo by Corda di Avor. I have made quite a bit of uh, progress. I had, last time I showed it to you, I had done the yoke and um, I was doing the short rows. And I think this marker is where I was <laughs> when I was last, when I last showed it to you. Well, after that, I uh, did the short rows and I knit a little bit of the body and then I um, put that on hold, picked up the stitches for um, the sleeves and uh, I did them uh, on magic loop two at a time to get them the right uh, or the same length. It has this really really nice um, lace pattern towards the cuff. Uh, <clears throat> as you can see I have this on hold as is you know of course the other other one since I was doing them two at a time because this is um, Malabrico Mechita Mechita, sorry, <laughs> yes, the stress is, is on the second syllable. Um, <clears throat> the color is the color is called dried orange, and it's a hundred percent superwash merino. So I'm thinking that it will stretch when I um, walk it, and I want to make sure that I have the right length for the sleeves. Uh, there's supposed to be quite a long uh, rib after this this uh, lace and you know that's why I stopped and put them on hold and then I continued uh, knitting the body because I wanted to have it sign or do a sort of a pre preliminary uh, blocking when I had done a little bit of the body and the and the sleeves so that I'd know how it sort of sits over the shoulders and over the boobs. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so I have made some of the body and I've started with the beautiful lace that's the same as in the sleeves but that lace runs down uh, the sides seem a little bit uh, in the same way as, as in this Tolosa. But yeah, so this is going to be really nice. But it's just now it's waiting for walking, the first walking. And for some reason I haven't just gotten around to doing it. Even though I really like, I really love knitting it. And oh man, this, this yarn is just so nice. I love the color, I love the feel of it, uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I've wanted to make the, the elephant for my nephew or whatever he is for me, <laughs> and, and I knew that there'd be this and that, a few things to do that I were, was doing on a deadline, sort of, so maybe that's why this has been just sitting there. What have I written down about it? Uh, oh yeah, forgot to tell you about the needles for the Tolosa. I used a 3.0 millimeter, so that's US size two and a half for the rib, and three and a half millimeters US size four for the other parts of the ball, uh, the shirt. Um, that's for the Tolosa, and <coughs> for this Clarissimo. I've used three and a half 
uh, millimeter needles for the rib. Again, that's US size four and four and a uh, four point oh millimeter needles for the rest of the body for the lace and the, the stockinette. That's US size six. Yep. Uh, so far, I've used see, uh, two skeins of this, or almost 200 grams. I have this much left on the of the second skein, and um, yeah, like I said, I'll be um, blocking this, and then I'm gonna see uh, how long the sleeves get after blocking, if the seven centimeters of rib. That's in the instruction will be enough, or if I'll need to to do some adjustments, make another repeat of the lace, or I don't know. We'll see. I'm pretty sure it's nice. It's good the way it is now, but we'll see. So that's Clorissimo, which is lovely, but I'll just have to. Uh, get back to it and then I'm not sure if I mentioned this last time maybe I didn't maybe I hadn't decided to do this anyway I'm doing uh, the Sock Knitters Anonymous um, mystery sock Sock Knitters Anonymous is a group in uh, on Rowery and they have this uh, year long sock down, I think, yes. And for September, the challenge, uh, September, October, the challenge, one of the challenges is a mystery sock by Heidi Nick, who is a designer I know from before, and I've ma uh, made quite a few of her sock patterns, loved all of them. I'm using my nostalgia knits. Uh, project bag for this and if you're doing the mystery sock by Heidi Nick it's called patchy sander it's a some sort of a plant um, if you're doing it and you don't want to see clue one done then yeah I'll look away I'll try to see if I can put a time here on the screen where I start talking about by next thing well anyway i'll show you the yarn first this is planitium ex machina i have the tag in my project bag somewhere yes no that's not it this is it planitium ex machina merino bamboo sock 60 percent uh, Superwash Merino, 25% bamboo, 15% nylon, and the colorway is called Thunderbird. And yeah, it's uh, sort of a charcoal whatever color. And as you can see, I'm uh, knitting from the inside of the cake and the outside. I'm knitting them two at a time on Magic Loop like I often do, especially uh, in this sort of project where, where it's a mystery sock. You have a clue and then uh, a week to knit that clue and then there's another clue. So if I just was doing them one at a time, I'd have to cl may, uh, knit clue one per, per sock, then I'll have, I'd have to have another set of needles and do clue one for the second sock and you know no I don't want to do that and I don't mind doing them two at a time so so that's what I'm doing I'm using <coughs> my uh, Chawu red lace needles these are size three and a half I know 3.0 millimeters so that's Two and a half US, and um, and I'm doing the beads, and that that's optional in the pattern. Yeah, <coughs> so I'm gonna show you the the socks now. 
or what I have of them. This, uh, I believe, is the front. I, I'm not sure. I don't remember. Maybe this is the front of the sock. So as you can see, there is some sort of a lace and you have the beads. And yeah, I made a mistake. Uh, these uh, sort of diamonds, I should have put, because I have the yarn over it here on the sides. Uh, they were supposed to be here in the center. This and uh, the same uh, motif on the other side of the sock, so I'll show it to you in just a sec. But yeah, the, so far I really like how they look. And this is the other side of the sock, and uh, ah, let's see, <laughs> okay, yes. So, where's the, yeah, here. So, they were supposed to be leaves like this but I made a mistake and I had already done the the decreases when I noticed and I was like ah, no I'm not gonna rip back and you know ripping often if I make a mistake I do just drop the needles or drop the stitches from the place where it is and then fix it there but since I had already done the decreases here, and I thought, oh no, it's going to be just too complicated um, to rip back <coughs> and fix on this spot. So I just uh, decided, no, I'm going to leave it. Anyway, so there is there are these, this kind of fishnet kind of thing here in the beginning. I think that looks kind of nice. And then, yeah, the leaf, which was supposed to uh, like echo the leaves on the other side. Well, mine doesn't. But yeah, they're going to be really nice. And uh, the clue number two has been released last Sunday, this Thursday. Uh, I just haven't had time to knit these. Um, because I've been doing the elephant. <laughs> I've been making the elephant. Didn't have time for the sock. But yeah, they're going to be really nice. <clears throat> and the next clue will be released next Sunday. So I'm pretty sure I'll, I'll finish uh, clue number two before that. But these are really nice. Did I write anything down about that? No, I didn't. Okay. My last work in progress, a few more squares for Koleva blankets. So Koleva blanket again is <coughs> a crochet along that was on like uh, two years ago, but I just fell behind and I didn't finish then, but I've been doing the squares, quite a few of the squares now, <laughs> I picked it up again. And do I have any of the, yes, I do have the yarns. I could show you the yarns again. So the yarn I used is from a, a package that I ordered. <coughs> it's this mini balasse, which is 75% wool, 25% polyamide, and it's uh, 200 meters in 100 grams. There are different colors of this thing yarn. I'm using a, a 4.0 millimeter uh, hook, that's G in the alphabet or whatever, the letter system. Yes, so my next or the first uh, finished square this time is here. It's called Yoga Heinen Suossa, Yoga Heinen in the Swamp. So this is your guy in here, and I guess this is the swamp. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> that's kind of funny. Um, yes, so uh, this is from the Finnish epic, national epic, Kalevala, and there is a you know a chain of events that leads to 
poor little yoga hainen uh, being in the swamp. Uh, when I was crocheting this, I thought this uh, round in here was pretty nice, like kind of fun to to do, and it has a nice effect in here. So it's like Yokohana was in the pool. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. So that was like fun to make. And was there anything? Okay, well I wasn't too keen on these, but they're not bad. All in all, it was uh, not a bad <coughs> square to crochet. And something I forgot to mention, I think, is that there the instructions are both in Finnish and in English. So you can choose either either uh, language. And then there are instruction videos on YouTube for each square. So if you don't understand the written instructions on how to do different things in crochet. Uh, the videos are really good and I have had to uh, use them several times because I don't crochet that much and I do know the basic things but you know all of these never done them before but with the help of the video yeah I was able to. <coughs> so yeah go ahead and in the swamp and the next square that I did was Kasvun Ihme, Miracle of Growth. So again, we have some popcorn stitches here, which were fine. And then there were these chains that you uh, crocheted <coughs> after you'd done quite a few rows um, of popcorn stitch in these places too but nothing very difficult I think in this this square yeah I think I only needed the video to uh, sort of make sure I knew how to to do these <coughs> chains here and then there was uh, a third Square that I finished. It's this one. It's called A Ole Vuoksi and Voittanutta. Nothing conquers the Vuoksi. Vuoksi is a, uh, a river or something. And I think these funny stitches here represent uh, uh, the foams of the rapids or something. So yeah, they were actually kind of fun to to crochet. And yes, I did need the video to show me exactly how to make these. But once I had, you know, watched it once, it wasn't that <coughs> difficult to, to make. There are pictures, photos in, in the instructions too. So I might have been able to do it even with just the, <coughs> the photos. But, you know, it's nice that there's also the <coughs> video to show, uh, to help you make sure that you understand what to do. Yeah, that's it. That's the third square that I finished now. And I have quite a few left to make. But I, I'm, you know, I don't, I'm not too pressed with time with that one because I'll finish it when I have time. I've just crocheted them and those when I didn't have anything else to do. We were, um, my husband likes to go and pick mushrooms. And this time of the year, there are quite a few, did steps in English too? Maybe? I'll put it on the screen. Step in, in French. Yes. Um, but yeah, so the way he picks them is that we go, he knows, you know, these small roads in, uh, in the forest. He knows the sort of forests that <coughs> where these types of mushrooms uh, usually grow in. And he drives kind of slowly and tries to find the, the mushrooms. 
as he's driving. He didn't, doesn't even want me to drive. <coughs> and then when he sees them, he just stops the car, gets out of the car, and, you know, after a while, he comes back with a few of those mushrooms. And then we ride along, <laughs> or drive along. And so I was crocheting while he was picking up mushrooms. Usually when we um, pick up different kinds of mushrooms, where we just park the car in one place and then we go into the forest and then we spend X amount of time in there looking for those mushrooms. Yes, of course, I go there and I pick those up myself. But, you know, I was just crocheting. Yeah, yeah, you go and pick them up. <laughs> yes, um, so that's what I've been doing because I didn't have, uh, I think my Clarissimo was at the stage where it is now. I'd finished this one and the elephant was just too fiddly to do in the car I found. So, so these have been crocheted while my husband has been <laughs> picking up some mushrooms. Yes. All right. Chatter. Um, and then we're finished. I don't know how long I've been talking, but not too long, I hope. Um, yes. Last time I announced my three-year potiversary giveaway, I said that I'd uh, donate uh, a pattern max 10 euros for somebody or anybody who uh, for somebody one of the people who comment uh, in the episode thread on Ravelry well only one person did so <laughs> congrats Elika you if you'll just let me know which pattern you want I'll be uh, happy to go and buy it for you <laughs> then there is um another prize <laughs> the sock free summer cal is over it ended on the the last day of august and the thread is still open well i'll just maybe go in and uh uh, lock it or whatever <laughs> um, after I've recorded but uh, there are quite a few finished objects there about 20 some I think uh, I don't have I, I do like to draw prizes from you know little pieces of paper and I haven't done them now and I have time to do this video now so uh, after I go to work and do whatever I need to do in there and then I come back home and finish everything I need to, you know, dinner, taking the dog out, etc. Um, I'll just do a small video with no talking, with me making those little slips of paper and then drawing up three num names because that's what I said I have three prizes and I'll show the prizes <coughs> in the in the prize drawing video and I'll add that at the very end of this video before the uh, nice sceneries scenery photos I have but yes that will be for you in just a sec <laughs> for me in a couple of hours Right, uh, other like current matters. Um, my work started this year, uh, th this uh, week, or well, I had done some uh, preparing on the weeks before that, but this Monday, uh, my cheap teaching started again. It's been nice to see new faces and old faces and. Um, sort of see how excited people are to start the studies and, and uh, start new things. And yeah, it, it's a nice feeling and sort of boosts me to, you know, 
get enthusiastic about it one more time. And I, you know, I, I love teaching, so it's not difficult to get me excited about that. <clears throat> yeah, and other things, um, I'm kind of starting to stress out about Christmas because there are these uh, presents I want to make for my nieces. I don't know how long it takes to make one and I know that I'll have to make three because I have three nieces. So I'll try and get them started pronto just soon soon after after I you know well if I remember to soak the clarissimo this evening lay flat to dry somewhere though we're going to Sama this evening. Well, anyway, I'll, I'll try and uh, uh, pre-block <laughs> Florissimo this evening and then I have, well, the socks, but do I want to finish clue number two before starting? Oh, we'll have to see. Anyway, there'll be a new project next time, uh, whether it's a working progress or, or finished one, I don't know, because I'm not sure how long it takes for me to record again in a few weeks, I'm sure. Yeah, uh, I think I'm just going to have to go and start getting ready for work. Um, <clears throat> but I hope you're all doing great. I hope you're having a good time. Uh, and if not, if you're having a not so great time, I hope that it gets better really soon. Uh, anyway, I hope to see you in a few weeks. And uh, until then, take care. Bye.